uh, well, global affairs analyst Marco Vincenzino uh, joins me now in the studio. Um, this isn't a surprise that uh, Syrians would be going undercover uh, into the likes of Thailand to perhaps uh, do ill. The bottom line is where do Russian holidaymakers go? Hmm. Sinai, we saw what happened in Sham el Sheikh. Obviously, they claimed credit for it. Russians have now confirmed the fact that that, that airplane that went down over Sinai with 200 and over 220 Russian passengers. Mm -hmm. Also, you have many um, you have many Russians that go to Turkey. Obviously, with the recent Russian-Turkish spat, many of them are now prohibited from going. Another destination is Dubai for Russian holidaymakers, mm. Thailand, and some yeah. others. So basically, wherever you see Russian tourists going will be a target after Russia began its direct military intervention in Syria in late September of 2015. Now, what about uh, the German parliament uh, voting yes to uh, some kind of involvement? Well, an anti-ISIS military mission is being called, but it's a non-combat role. What's the point of that? Basically, it's important support roles. There are important support roles to be made. There's over, in the anti-ISIS coalition led by the U.S., there's over 60 countries involved. But if you look at the sorties that have been run since October, August of 2014, over 90% of them have been American. That doesn't mean having support of others is important, but obviously if there's going to have to be at some stage some sort of land element or land dimension to the war against ISIS specifically in Syria, obviously it's going to require more partners to contribute, whether probably primarily probably in the form of special forces mm. if needed. So far it's just most countries, everyone's limited, the vast majority are limited to the air power, military contributions. We saw in recent days the British Parliament mm. approved for British fighter jets to go over Syria, although they've been operating over Iraq since August of sure. 2014. I'm just noticing that um, John Kerry, the U.S. Secretary of State, he's been saying uh, over the past uh, 12 hours or so that Syria, uh, uh, th that uh, other Arab forces, apart from um, the main coalition members like um, whoever it may be, the U.S., Germany, Britain now, um, should be found to take on ISIS. Um, air strikes alone uh, won't uh, defeat ISIS. Well, that's that's rather obvious, but it doesn't seem to be the case that anyone uh, is of the opinion uh, politically that uh, there should be ground troops added uh, to those airstrikes. Yes, it's what we look at the role of advisors, the idea being that you need partners on the ground and who those partners have to be. You look, for example, the Kurds, Kurdish forces in, in Iraq and Syria have played a very important role. The other ones in, in Syria you have is very scattered elements, but not a unified element. Yet on the Iraqi side, you have the support of the Peshmerga, the Kurds, the Iraqi army, which is yet to prove itself. And then you also have Shia mm. militias, which technically we're not supporting, but we're on the same side with them in mm. terms of the Western coalition. Yes, if ultimately there has to be a, a strike, in, specifically we're talking mm. about Syria now, if you have to remove them from urban centers, places yeah. like Raqqa, for example, it will take uh, a combined force of ground forces of mm. Of, from, of Syrians, whether it's Kurds, mm. Arab elements, but also it's likely to include some special forces from foreign countries. So as we speak, we're uh, watching uh, some picture here, and uh, of course um, we've been seeing uh, the tornadoes and the typhoons and uh, obviously uh, other uh, jet fighters bomb uh, what have been over the past couple of days uh, an oil installation, but I think this is uh, near Raqqa we're seeing here just now. A big problem here, of course, um, that uh, opponents of air strikes uh, I've always considered and are arguing about is that, okay, uh, Raqqa is supposedly uh, the main headquarters for the Islamic State, but at the same time, much uh, of their chieftains, if I can put it that way, have moved away to Mosul and other areas uh, in Iraq. So what's left, okay, there are still uh, so-called IS forces in Raqqa, but they're bedded in with civilians. So when the airstrikes go in, it's always problematic. Yeah, I mean, if you look at particularly the U.S., uh, you, what, as we mentioned earlier, the vast majority of these airstrikes from the coalition are from the U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy, U.S. fighters. And basically, at the current time, they're being extraordinarily careful to avoid collateral damage mm -hmm. in order to prevent local reactions 
of the population against them. And then at the same time, it's the fact that if you really want to have, sometimes you have to take some risks. Mm. The reality is, is that a lot of targets, that, there are still targets to be struck, but the vast majority of the critical targets, I'd say, have already been mm. struck. So when you have, you know, countries like the UK wanting to join the uh, the air strikes in Syria, yes, it's good for morale. It's good for it's, mm. it's important symbolically. It's extremely important, and obviously makes an operational contribution. But ultimately. Um, in order for to if one really wants to strike at this stage now mm. after a year of bombings if one really wants to make a difference on the ground in ISIS controlled area in Syria the land element sure. ground forces mm. have to be have to be really introduced how it's done is the big mm. debate whether you you coalesce effective mm. forces on the ground whether it's Kurdish YPG with local Arab militias that's the big question and the big argument Western forces, particularly the United States and the UK, are still what you can call as the Iraq Central. Mm. Right, okay. Marco, thank you very much indeed thank for you. that analysis.